Hi there, my name is Mark Kolabala and I'm the President and CEO of Diamonds North Resources. I'm going to talk to you today about a project that we've got called Hepburn. This is a copper-silver project. It's in the Northwest Territories. Before we get started, I'll just show you our forward-looking statement. Now looking at uh, the Hepburn project, it is a copper project, copper-silver. It's a very specific type of project, though it's an IOCG. IOCG stands for Iron Oxide Copper Gold. We like these projects because they're, they can be very large, anywhere from 10 million to 8 billion tons in size. Quite often they have high copper grades, anywhere from say 0.2 to uh, as high as 5% copper. Another thing that we like about IOCGs, quite often they've also got other commodities involved as a byproduct, and they can be in fairly high amounts, things like gold, silver, uranium, and rare earths, as well as things like bismuth. Now a few examples of IOCG deposits would be uh, Olympic Dam, that's the big one, that's 8 billion tons. Uh, Ernest Henry, 100 million tons. Candelaria, move down to the bottom of the list and you'll see something called Prominent Hill, that's in Australia. It's also a very large deposit, uh, 280 million tons with, a, with an average grade of 0.89% copper. Now I'm going to focus in on that because there's a lot of similarities between Prominent Hill and Hepburn and you'll see that as I go through this presentation. So I'll just start off with a bit of information about Prominent Hill. Prominent Hill is in Australia. This slide here that you see shows the magnetics for the region. You can see a very intense high red and high yellow colors. These are high intensity magnetics. What this is telling us is you've got high, highly oxidizing geological environments. You want to see deep seated structures like what you're seeing here and these, uh, these dashed lines. And these rocks are Proterozoic in age, which is also important for the IOCG type deposit. Prominent Hill, you can see, is a little tiny red dot uh, within the magnetics. And I'm going to focus in on that area, which is right here. Now you can see this magnetics. And just off the flank of the magnetic zone, you see a, a zone with mineralization, which is probably just, a, just under about two kilometers in size. And that's why these things can be very big. Uh, you've got a lot of mineralization over that area. You've got good grades, both in copper and in gold. Now, keeping that in mind, as I move along, I'm going to show you the Hepburn property, but just keep in mind the similarities to Prominent Hill. Now, here's Hepburn. Hepburn is in the Northwest Territories. It's about 400 kilometers north of Yellowknife and about 200 kilometers south of the Arctic coast. There's a number of features that you need to see with IOCG type deposits. Hepburn, why do we see it as IOCG? Well, first of all, it's got, a, it's got major structures and I'll show you that. Favorable age, oxidizing geological environment. We've got evidence of hydrothermal fluids coming through uh, that bring the metals into the system. And we've got favorable rocks as well as copper, silver and other elements of elevation that are, that are elevated within these samples. Now first, let's take a look at uh, major structure. Major structure, what we've got here is the Wapame. It's called the Wapame Fault Zone. And what this separates is the, the large Archean craton from the Proterozoic craton. The Proterozoic uh, area is the Great Bear Magmatic Zone. And this is probably one of the best places to look for an IOCG type deposit anywhere in North America. Now this structure is very big, it's deep seated. It extends for over 400 kilometers. And you can see a number of deposits along the length of that structure. Let's focus in on Hepburn. Hepburn is just on the very northern portion of the Great Bear Magmatic Zone, and it's on the western side of the structure. So I'm going to zoom in, and let's take a look at some magnetics from that area. You can see the Wapame structure. It's that black line running in a north-south direction, kind of a curvy line. And if you look to the east, you see dark blues, low magnetics. Go to the, e to the west, you'll see much higher magnetics telling us that we're in an oxidizing environment, which is a very important part of the story for IOCG deposits. Looking into the central area, you see a nice little block that's sort of oriented in a northwest, southeasterly direction. Now, this is a very important area for us. We've got locally high magnetics, and as well as locally high amounts of hematite, which is another type of iron oxide. Let's take a look at that, at that magnetic high in that region. Now, it sits within a sedimentary unit surrounded by mafic volcanics. These mafic volcanics are important. They're a source of metals like copper and silver. And also, you've, you can see a lot of structural complexity here, which provide conduits for fluids migrating up past these rocks, scavenging the metals and depositing them into this, into this area. Let's zo zoom in again a little bit closer into that magnetic zone. And now we're seeing a little bit more detailed geology. On the bottom, you see the mafic volcanics, then we move into a mudstone, and then on the upper portion of that slide, you see sandstones. 
In the central area, we've got a mudstone unit that has been intruded by a late felsic intrusion. And this late felsic intrusion is quite important as it might be the source of fluids bringing metals to the surface. One of the things we did last year that really advanced the project was bringing in an IOCG specialist to look at the geology and really start to, to uh, look for signs of an IOCG type deposit. One of the big things is alteration, looking for evidence of fluids that have come through the, through the area and have maybe deposited metals such as copper and silver. This geologist identified a zone to the north and a zone to the south and these, this zone, these zones contain large amounts of hematite, magnetite, potassium alteration, as well as chlorite and sericite. And these are really important signs to see for, for any IOCG type deposit. And what was really interesting is they cover very large areas. For example, we're seeing this, this intense alteration over two and a half kilometers and it's still open in either, uh, either direction. It hasn't been mapped yet. Independently from, from that mapping, we started looking at geophysics and we looked at something called induced polarization or IP geophysics. We did a number of lines you can see on the screen. And after that work was done, we looked at the results and this is what we could see. You can see on this, on this map a lot of yellows and blues and reds. What we're really interested in seeing here are the bright reds almost to a white color. These are telling us that we have high chargeability. It's telling us we have potential for a lot of sulfides and this is what we're looking for, looking for here. Sulfides that would carry copper and silver elements. Along the southern part of this map you see that very intense red. This is over two and a half kilometers. It goes off the survey so it's still open on either, either side. And we're looking at something that could be as wide as two to 500 meters in, in width. Now if you, you take that data and you lay it over top of the geology, you see it's very coincident with the late felsic intrusion. And what you're looking at here, the red lines are showing us where the chargeability is in relation to, to the map. And it's also coincident with the, the alteration. When you go out and look at the rocks and start to look for areas that you might sample, when you start to collect samples, you start to see in very high copper numbers. And copper here, we're getting high numbers would be anything from half a percent up to 40% in terms of uh, grab samples. Not only do you get copper, we're also seeing high silver. Occasionally we see high gold, or elevated gold, bismuth, and uranium numbers. You can see a little white circle with an X through it. That's a drill hole that was put in probably in 1997. And even that drill hole, you're seeing 2.4% copper with just under 100 grams of silver over a 4.7 meter interval. And again, a second hole, 1.8% copper with 78 grams per tonne silver in 5.5 meters of, of drilling. So this is a very interesting area. We're quite keen on the area to the south where we've got the high IP, we've got good mineralization. We see a number of drill targets developing in this region. Now just in summary, uh, looking at this region as an IOCG target, Hepburn itself, this is a new large-scale untested target. It's high grade, high tonnage potential target as well, based on the fact that we've got high copper numbers, high silver, as well as we're seeing mineralization and geophysical signatures over two and a half kilometers and still open. This project is drill ready. We've got targets delineated. It's permitted for drilling and we've got a camp established as well as fuel on site. This map also shows that one geophysical, that one mag high is not the only place that we're targeting in this, in this area. We've got a number of other areas that not only have similar magnetic si signature, but they've got the same type of geology. And each one of those either has high copper or high silver or both uh, just from prospecting samples that we've seen in the last couple of years. One of the things we like about this project, it, it is an IOCG type target. Again, these, these can be very big targets. They can have quite high grade and this is the kind of thing that would, uh, that could work quite well in the north. Again, uh, thank you very much. The company name is Diamonds North Resources. Uh, we trade on the TSX Venture Exchange under the trade symbol DDN. Our website, www.diamondsnorth.com. Uh, please visit the, our website for more information. Thank you.